My name is Dee Adekubi, and I want to welcome you all to day six of celebrating women in leadership, leading to Women's International Day on Monday, March the 8th. This coming Monday, millions of people around the world are going to be joining together to celebrate the impact that women are having across the world. And also to, you know, and also to um, to also highlight the need for equality with women. Um, All Women Ministry is so happy to be able to partner and support this great cause and also and support this, what uh, women are doing all around the world. But, and so to kick off day six of 
Women's International Day celebration. I am going to invite the beautiful Priscilla, one of the amazing singer songwriters in here in Alberta that is rising up in the arts and entertainment industry to serve God and to serve people. She's gonna be singing for us live. You've just heard her latest single, but now you get to hear her live. So please welcome Priscilla. This is to all the women out there. Is it strength? Strength Strength like no other reaches to and is your strength. Strength like no Spread like no other reaches to and is your hope for tomorrow. strength is made perfect in your weakness and you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you I know we do a lot as women we multitask and we are all over the place but I want you to know and I came to remind you tonight that he is your peace reaches to you oh in the fullness of in the power of your name, you lift me up. You lift me up in the fullness of your Your name, you lift me up. You lift me up. Oh, he is your strength, strength like no we say strength tonight, strength like no other, yes, reaches to you. Tell yourself, is your hope, is your hope, because the least you can face tomorrow, hope for tomorrow. For tomorrow, in your approach. 
project reaches to you. And in the midst of the storm, even love peace is like a river. Receive peace tonight, peace like a river. Reaches to you. And perhaps you're wondering, who am I talking about? And who is this person that's going to give us the strength? I'm talking about Jesus. He's my healer, your strong tower, protector, provider, strong tower, provider, sustainer, waymaker. Your name is Jesus, my healer, strong tower, protector, provider. Sustainer, way maker, defender, consumer. I am. That's my job. Your name is Jesus, my healer, strong tower, protector, provider, sustainer, way. Priscilla, I pray that God will continue to bless you. I pray that God will continue to lift you up. I pray that God will continue to birth through you songs that will deliver, that will heal, that will set people free, that will bring restoration to people's lives. I pray that God will continue to use your voice to change this generation, to turn mm -hmm. people back to God. As you sing, as you lift God up, I pray that souls will be drawn to heaven in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, my darling. We are going to hear more from, um, we are going to hear more from Priscilla at the end of tonight. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that so many of you are joining us. For those of you who are just joining us, my name is Dee Adekubi of All Women Ministry. And I am on, I want to welcome you to day six of women in uh, celebrating women in leadership. And tonight we are focusing on on women in government and women in politics now why do we know why do we need to celebrate why are we celebrating women i said that earlier on is to really to highlight the great things that women are doing around the world and also to also bring to the forefront the need for equality you know equality um in the world for women as well we are we are so grateful to that we can stand with um the, uh, we can stand with united nations in recognizing the achievements of women and also to advocate for more to be done. Today, you know, we are using this seven days to focus on women in leadership in the seven pillars of our society. Now, what are the seven pillars of our society? Uh, number one, the family. Number two, education. 
Number three, business. Number four, media. Number five, arts and entertainment. Number six, government and politics. And number seven, religion, or in our case, um, the church. And we have spent the last five days looking at the family, talking to women in leadership in the family, women in leadership in business, in the media, arts and entertainment, and, and in education. And tonight we are going to be looking at women in government and in politics. And it is very important that we recognize what women are doing and the need for us to rise up and do the work of the ministry in the seven pillars of society. Now, let me just lay this foundation down. We are not a feminist group. We are an organization called by God to raise up the Deborahs of our generation to serve the purpose of God in their generation, in this generation, to take their place beside our husbands, beside our fathers, our sons, our brothers, to take our places in these seven pillars and do the work of the ministry because God has called us. You know, there's neither male nor female, nor Jew, nor Gentile. We are all one in the body of Christ, called to serve God and to serve people. And so I want to just quickly give you a little bit about the government pillar before we meet our guest that is on tonight. The government pillar is as significant as the other pillars to keep the structure and foundation of a nation secure. Its role and purpose are to govern and lead the country, protect and provide for its citizens and represent its nation to the world. A stable government provides four essentials. Number one, security and protection. Number two, provision. Number three, employment. And number four, general welfare. Governments create values. They create missions, rules and regulations that govern the nation and ensures its citizens it's in adhere to them. And as all women ministry, we believe that God has called every Deborah to rise up that is called into government, called into politics to rise up and to serve God in government, in their nations. You know, we need to have, you know, politicians, we need to have Deborahs who are lobbyists, Deborahs who are board members that will work and bring godly values into our government, into politics. And so tonight, it is my privilege to bring before you a woman of God, a woman of God, a woman of God, a Deborah of our generation who is rising up to do the work of the ministry where God has placed her in the pillar of government and politics. I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a bio about her and then I'm gonna get her to introduce herself just the way she would like us to get to know her better. First and foremost, her name is Ajibola Abitoye. I hope I pronounced that right because people are always mad at me because I'm always butchering Nigerian names. You know, I married an Ondo man and I still haven't learned how to pronounce Nigerian names properly. Please forgive me and correct me if I am wrong. Ajibola Abitoye was elected as councillor for the city of Fort Saskatchewan in October 2017. She, is she was born in Lagos, Nigeria to a journalist father and an, and an IT mom. She moved to Fort Saskatchewan in 2012 and and after, after she got married to her husband, Joshua, they are blessed with three children. My darling, you've got three more to go to catch up with me. Yeah. <laughs> all things are possible. Come on, you got this. You are a Deborah. You can do all things. <laughs> you want to say anything about that? Capacity. I hope you're not prophesying because if you're prophesying, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hit it back right back. I'm like, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. You should meet my husband. My husband. If my husband sees you, he's the, he is the baby prophet. You know, prophet. He's always seeing babies around, and so people are always running because if he sees a baby around you, trust me. Nine months later, you're gonna be having a baby. He is a baby. Oh, I then. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Jibs, people call you Jibs, right? Yes. Yeah, Jibs. I love that. It's you know, Jibs, I be told you, welcome to all women ministry, women in leadership celebration tonight. Um, how are you doing, my darling? I'm doing very well. And Pastor D, it's so 
nice to be here. It's such an honor to be here. I just want to say thank you for all you're doing for women through your ministry. Um, and you know what? I'm just really happy to be here. I'm re really excited. I'm looking forward to the conversations we're going to have tonight. Oh, wonderful. Why don't you, I mean, I just give a little snippet about who, you know, Jibs Abitoye is. Why don't you just introduce yourself the way that, we you know, and just let people get to know you. Yes, yeah, yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So, um, so my name is Ajibola, and and you didn't murder my name at all. You got you got the pronunciation correctly. Um, so my name is Ajibola Abitoye. Um, I'm. Well, maybe let, let me let me go back. So I'm originally from Nigeria. Um, and so when I finished school in Nigeria, I got a job in a bank where I worked for about four years before I immigrated to Canada. And on that job. It paid the bills because it was good money, right? But I just wasn't feeling challenged, you know. And when I got the opportunity to move to Canada, I said to myself, never again, that I'm going to make sure that I pursue my dreams. I'm in line with what God wants me to be. Mm. And so, um, so I got married to my husband who was already living in Canada. And that's what made me, that's why I moved to Canada. Okay. Um, and, and I moved on in July in 2012, you know, and as soon as my feet stepped in this land, I started to confess that, th that God has given me this land as a possession. And I'm mm. saying that right now, because what is a confession in your mouth? Come on. Because we, we need to always be saying what we want to see. Mm. You know, so the Bible says that God called darkness out of light, you yeah. know, but we, we, we seem to always say what we don't want to see. But no, you know, the Bible in Genesis 1, 1 says that in the beginning was the world. And the, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In the beginning, God, um, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth yes. and the earth was that form and void, you know, and darkness was upon the surface of the deep and all of that. But God didn't say, oh, my God, this is darkness. No, he said what he wanted to see. Mm, come he on. Said, Right. And so I started to say what I wanted to see in my life. And as a matter of fact, I wrote a five year plan. And again, it goes back. And, you know, I like to, ref you know, I feel I'm going to feel really free to quote scriptures because like when I'm in like just general, when I'm in like general meetings, I like I, I, I quote a bit of scriptures. I mean, one or two. But here I'm going to be like on fire, just just letting it drop because because this is like this is a Christian okay. ministry. So I'm not, limiting, I'm not limiting it at all. So, um, you know, the Bible says, write the vision, make it plain, you know? So I wrote my five-year plan and part of there, part of the um, vision, I said, I wanted to make, um, I wanted to make a major impact in my community. And so, um, it wasn't a surprise that exactly five years after I immigrated to Canada, I became a city councilor. Wow. So, um, one thing I did as soon as I got here was volunteer. And I'm going to talk about serving how it is important to serve. Because you know what? The Bible talks about this, the, the, the principle of seed time and harvest. You can't oh, serve and not rip back. It's not possible. So, uh, so that very first year when I moved to Canada, I was already sitting on two boards. Wow. That same year. And I mean, I moved in July. So I'm saying six, within six months, I was already volunteering and sitting on boards, right? And you know, and and so as my life went on, I got a job in a bank. Like lots of people said, oh, you know what? You know, when you're new to Canada, you can't get a job right away. You know, you have to, you know, work, do a menial job, and maybe you can eventually get in get into your field. But I said no. I got a job one month after in my field, which was in banking. Good. In fact, when I was in Nigeria, I, I I was sharing office with many people, but in Canada, I had my own office <laughs> as a student. Yes. <laughs> Because it's really important that we understand that what is your belief system? You know, when the Bible says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It's not saying what you are thinking. It's as you think. So when you're saying, oh, you're saying, oh, I want to be rich. I'm going to be rich. And you're saying that you're thinking that. The question is, how are you thinking of it? Yes. That's the question. You know, and so I went and I got a job in the bank. And I got uh, like a year and a few months after. I was like, you know what? I'm, I think I'm done here. I want to move on. And so I wrote um, Project Management Professional. I became a PMP. And then I moved jobs so, to become a project controller in Dow Chemical. And then after that, I started to have my kids. I had my kids, two boys back to back. And in 2016, during the US elections, um, I started to get interested in politics. Like I'm not someone that was ever interested in politics. My dad, my husband, like they, they follow politics, they're into politics, but I just never was that girl that was interested in politics. But in 2006, as I saw a woman, and this is the power of representation. That's why we talk about it's important for us to see people that look like us in the power in the in positions of leadership. Because when you see them there, you, you you know that you are able to do it. And so when I saw Hillary run, I, I mean, there's 
for some reason, I was just inspired and I decided to follow the elections. I just got really interested in politics. And I remember um, during that period, I had a conversation with my husband. I'm like, hmm, I'm beginning to get really interested in politics. And it, it was actually his, his idea. It wasn't mine. It was my husband's idea. I was like, why don't you run for city council in Fort Saskatchewan? I'm like, what? No, definitely not. So I lived in Canada for four years at this, at this point. I wasn't a citizen. Um, I'm black. Um, I have an accent. I mean, I just like to think of all the negatives. And, you know, when the Spirit of God is inside of you, he starts to, you know, steer you on the inside. I, I just realized that I couldn't push that, that thought away. Mm. And I was like, okay, you know what? Let me go ahead and do some research. Mm. And I went ahead and did some research. And I realized that the requirements are not, you don't even have to go, have gone to school. So it was just like really basic requirements, you know. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should give this a try. And, I, and as soon as I said, let me give, I'm going to give it a try. It's like, God just heard me. And it's like, okay, whoa, no, take this. <laughs> because you know what? As soon as it happened, I'm not even joking. I met my, the, my member of parliament of my community. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to support you or whatever you need. I'm going to support you. He came and met with my volunteers. He went out door knocking with me. He sent his assistants to, to support me. I met with my former MLA who gave me a lot of support. I met with um, somebody else, another uh, black man who, and again, the power of representation, who had been a counselor, a mayor, and an MLA. And he started to meet with me every week, you know, to just mentor me and tell me like, okay, this is what you do and that is what you do. You know, so God just put all this, it's like when the Bible says like, he orders the footsteps of the righteous, he literally ordered my footsteps such that I just started to get support. Like when I went out door knocking, like I'll meet people like I don't know, and they're like, "Oh my God, we've heard so much about you. We think you're going to be an asset to this community." Like I was literally going door knocking, and, and, and sometimes I look back and I'm like, "Are they talking about me or somebody else?" <laughs> it's like God. It's like God just went ahead of me and just did the work, essentially. Yeah. You know, um, and it was just it was just amazing, you know, um, and and in that election, fifteen people ran. I was the only non-white person. Hmm. And I, I have the third highest votes. So so the way it works that it's the highest the six highest votes win. You wow. know, so so obviously for me, when I was getting into it, I'm like, even the experience alone, I mean I'd volunteer in my community, I wanted to take it to another level, you know. Even the experience alone would have just been mind blowing. But the fact that I won, like I was like, okay. But you know when I realized I was gonna win was one day I was just I saw it in my mind's eye. Like I saw me sitting on the council chambers with my name in front of me and I knew I was at one. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, I don't want to bring it, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What are you thinking? What are you visualizing? What is that thing, that image you have in the back of your mind? Because you know what? It will happen. It will happen. You know, and you know what? I, I don't I don't take it very lightly. I feel it's a great honor and privilege for me to be serving my community. In fact, I did some research and I realized that the first black woman that was ever elected in Alberta was in the seventies. And since then there has been none. My goodness. None. None. Um, there have been some black men, but women, no. Come on, talk to them. Talk. Oh, so really, no, no, so people are running because I remember when I ran, there was a few black women that ran as well. You know, so we, we just need to be more, more open, you know, to more representation. Because representation matters, you know. Um, as as a as a new immigrant at the time, I still consider myself maybe I'm not a new immigrant because I'm I'm coming on nine years now in Canada. But um, I bring a different perspective. I mean, I'll give you a simple example. I had a baby on council. There's nobody nobody in the history of my council in the, in the past two hundred years of my of my council has ever had a baby before. So I'm the first woman to have a baby on council. But and, mm. and I realized, okay, maybe we need a policy for parental leave for council members. That's just an example, right? Um, and so I was like, it's important that you know diversity is important. I'm not just talking about race, I'm talking about you know, gender, people with the disability, you know, just, just different types of we just need diversity and just important. And you know, I'm just gonna leave you at that. I don't want to in case you have <laughs> any more questions. I feel like I've spoken a lot. You know, I am so proud. One of the things that you said is that you said that as soon as you landed in Canada, you you know you began to make confessions. You began to see things. You know, I mean, and and like you said, as a man thinketh, so he is. And you said that you never thought about this previously. 
Mm-hmm. But you know, it was it was it was something that just came out of nowhere. You know, right. and that, you know, and that you know, and that really tells me that you cannot limit yourself. You cannot box yourself. You cannot say, "Oh, you know what? This is you know, this is not me. This is not who I am." Because you can never, you never fully know who you are. Exactly. Every day we are evolving. We are growing. We're going from glory to glory. We're constantly yes, we're into the image of God and likeness mm-hmm. of God. I want you to address women that feel that you know. You've already said a little bit about it. That feel as if that you know that you know that you know that they don't have the experience. They don't have the the you know the education. They don't have even the linguistic. Talk to those people who are on the fence that they want to do more, but they just don't have that faith and confidence to be able to rise up. Yeah, for sure. Um, so first of all, if it's a desire in your heart, mm. it's going to continue to be a desire if you don't take the first step. And they mm. say the journey of a million miles starts with the first step. And there's a, there's, a, there's a quote I always say, it is, opportunity dances with those already on the dance floor. I love that quote. <laughs> I, I say it every time because the truth is, you know what? You never know. Opportunity might just come like this. But guess what? You didn't register the business, mm. Mm. right? Or you didn't you didn't write the exam? Yes. Or you didn't talk to that person you should have talked to. Mm. You know, so it's just very important that you take the first step because you know what? As a and I know and I know your audience is Christ, uh, Christian, so I'm, I'm going to keep talking about talking, but talking from the scripture. You know. See, the Bible says that God orders our footsteps. You know, he says that even before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. So you know what? That path you are in right now, it was already planned by God over 2,000 years ago. Come on. Not only an actor, God is a master chess player. He knows when he moves upon the king, the knight, and everything. So God is the one that's going to order you, but you need to take the first step. You've got to take a step. Just that first step. And and that's why I use my story. As soon as I decided I'm gonna do this, it's like the floor that the windows of heaven just came, came just was just open. And that's and that, and sometimes taking that first step is 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 a step of faith, It's a measure of faith. You know, as children of God, we all have a measure of faith. What I would like to know because I'm um, the Christianity is all about faith. You know, yes. but sometimes God needs you to take that first step to show your faith. Mm. To show your faith. God wants you to take that first step. Now, the Bible says that now faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence yeah. of things, nothing. Now faith is a substance. So it's tangible. It's the action you take. So you need to be willing and ready to take the action. It might be embarrassed. You might be scared to death. In fact, let me tell you something. Just a few days ago, I was in an, inter- I was in an interview and um, a girl from my class in university was actually on that interview. And she's like, Jeeves, like, I don't like, how did you become this person? Because on um, my final year presentation, we're, t- we're supposed to come and present to the whole class. I froze. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm not a public speaking person at all. In fact, I remember when, my, when I was in my NYSC, youth service, for those that don't know what I'm saying, it's like after you graduate from university, um, the the, na- the the country kind of post you to a different location for you to serve the, yeah. the nation for a year. And so I was in my youth service and I was told to come and speak on a panel. Same thing, I froze. So public speaking is not really my thing. But you know what? Because I put myself out there, it's helped me grow. It helped me develop confidence. Like, I'm, I, I'm not the most confident person. And I'm not the greatest speaker. But you know what? I have grown. But you, you don't get that opportunity it. until you push yourself. Until you put yourself out there. You know and what? Say, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say one more thing. Mentor. Oh, my God. Everyone needs a mentor. Everyone needs a coach. And that's what I'm talking about, representation. Look, everyone needs a coach and a mentor. The reason I, I knew I could do it because I saw a man, even though he was a man, I mean, he was a black man. I saw he had done it before, and I saw the possibility of me being there because I've seen someone do that. Now, your mm-hmm. coaches and your mentors, that's, that's what they do for you. The cut, they cut the journey of 15 years to 15 days. And yes, that's... Come on, come on, say that again. The spirit is the one that does it. So the Bible says that Ahab outran the chariot of, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Elijah outran the chariot of Ahab. That speed, that divine speed. As a child of God, we can just be in church speaking in tongues and preaching. No, you should take that anointing and that power to the marketplace. Come on. The <laughs> Bible says that you are the light of the world, that you are the salt of the earth. Mm. It is real. It's not just in church. 
No, it is not. Go out to the market, but let them see what your God can do. Because you know what? Whatever you thought just prospers. And they wonder, why is this person prospering everything she does? It's the energy of the spirits. I can't help myself. I'm sorry. Oh, my darling, you are speaking my word. You know what? This year, God spoke to us is our year of divine acceleration. From 1 Kings chapter 18, Elijah outran Ahab's chariots, divine mm. acceleration. And I just want to thank you for even going there because that's what we, that's what I've been preaching and teaching on since the beginning of this year. Yeah, you know, you know, I truly believe, and I know you believe this, that we need Deborahs in government and politics, just like Daniel in the Bible, just like Esther, and just like Deborah at every level of policy making. You know, uh, Jibs, did you know that it was a it was a woman who insisted and fought for prayers to be taken out of school? Uh, it was also a woman who fought and asked for women's rights to vote and equal opportunity. Uh, did you know that it was also a woman who challenged and changed the law to allow black women to vote? Uh -huh. And I mm -hmm. want to just encourage everyone that is listening. Women are not just homemakers. We mm -hmm. are policy makers as mm -hmm. well. We are not just homemakers. We are policy makers. If God has, play, has given you a burden for the country, for the nation, you need to rise up in government and politics and begin to represent God because you can also impact, you can influence policies. You can influence decisions that are being made in our government. It doesn't matter if you are just at the basic level. Everybody has to start somewhere. You know, and I want to encourage you that this year we want to challenge every woman, you know, Jibs, challenge them. Why should they rise up? Why should more women rise up in government and politics? Okay, I, I always, I, and this is another quote I always say I say, if you're not on the table, you're on the menu. I'm going to say that again. If you're not on the table, you are on the menu. What that means is if you're not on the table where decisions are being made, you are on the menu, meaning that they can they can order you anyhow. They can they can push you left, right, middle, center. Nobody cares. <laughs> Why it's important for women, especially. Hmm. You know what? Look at the population of the world: eight billion people. Hmm. Almost fifty percent are women. What's the representation of women in in politics or in government? Oh, it's less less than thirty percent. And you know what? I understand because, I mean, our world has evolved so much. And like, I'm currently reading a book called um, Understanding the Purpose and Power of Men by Miles Monroe. And it talks about how, you know, in the past, you know, um, men were really, they, they, they were really, they really focused on their roles, you know, which is, pro, which is to provide, which is to procreate. And women were really homemakers. And we're talking, talking 30, 40, 50 years ago. It's not too far. But things have changed so much that now women are asking for equality. You know, so but let's not let's not let it not just be in words, let it be in action. Let us give women the opportunity. And that's why we have organizations like like equal, equal, um, equal something, I can't remember. Equal voices. Yeah. Equal voices. They kind of help women to um, you know, they they train them, they maybe help them with resources to run if they want to run. You know, so it's important for women to step up because no sometimes nobody's gonna come and say, Hey, you need to do this. You need to you need to create space. You need to create space for yourself. You need to create because when you create space for yourself, you create space for other people. You know, I ran four years ago and I won. And today, I can't tell you how many black people have reached out to me and black women have reached out to me to say, "Oh, they are running their community." And you know what? I'm 100 percent happy. Look, if you want to run, come to me. I will share my experience with you. I look. I don't hide anything. I will tell you everything as it is. So I'm with, because you know people also provided me that support. So I, I'm I'm so happy when I hear there's a woman or there is a person of color that's running mm. because it's so important. That representation is so important. See, yes. um, in, in my community, I I brought forward a motion on diversity and inclusion, which passed. So so I really honor my council because my council was was they were gracious enough to support the motion and we passed it and the reason I'm, I'm saying that is because i do know somebody else in another community that tried to pass the same thing and it got it got got it got turned down by their council but i'm not i'm not going into that but i'm just trying to say that as a woman of color i thought it was very important for me to put forward that kind of motion and when this judge floyd thing happened last year 
my city on their Facebook page said, look, we do not tolerate discrimination in our community. And you know, Black Tuesday, they had like a the Black Tuesday thing on, on their social media page, which is very powerful because we have a diversity and inclusion policy to show that, look, we don't tolerate discriminations here, discrimination here. We don't tolerate racism here. Mm. And it's for things, and okay, for example, I'm a woman. I, uh, we also pass a motion on parental leave so that we can open the door for other young women to run. Because not, naturally, you don't get parental leave as an elected official. How do we bring down those barriers to make sure that people who are underrepresented also are, have an opportunity to you know, get in on, on the conversation, get in on that table? Hmm. My goodness. My goodness. I love what you said. If you create space for yourself, you create space for others. You know, that reminds me of the story of Esther. Esther put herself out there, you know, but because she put herself out there, she was able to save her nation, her people. When we put ourselves out there, we can, you know, God will use us to do mighty things. You know, God will use us to do great things. And I want to just go back and say to Pete, you know, as many women that are listening to me, right, listening to us right now, ladies, you can do the work of the ministry wherever you are called. You don't, ha you know, the work of the ministry is not just restricted to being, you know, to singing in the choir, to preaching, to, you know, to being an usher. That is not the work of the ministry. The work that, you know, the church is a place of equipping. It's a place of education. And, it, and it's also a place of, you know, releasing, to release you to go into the world and serve God there. And so I want to encourage you that wherever God has called you, we've been looking at this all week, Jibs. We talked about women rising up in the home. We talked about women rising up in business. Do business. If God has called you to do business, do business. And, you know, and your business is the ministry. If God has called you into the media, that is your ministry. If God has called you into arts and entertainment as a singer, a dancer, as a lobbyist, as a counselor, that is your ministry. Your ministry is not carrying a Bible and shabakata kata kata. Your ministry does not even have to involve the word Jesus. Mm. You know, can, I, can I jump in here? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So Jesus said, I send you as sheep among the wolf. Come and he on. said that so that some of those wolves can become sheep. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen in church. That doesn't happen in church. I say this, look, I'm a tongue firing, tongue speaking person. So when people say to me that, you know, as a pastor, you can't be in politics. I say that's a friggin' lie. That's because a lie the devil. David was a king. He was a priest. He was a prophet. Daniel, who he his reign, like Daniel served over four kings mm. in politics, and he was a prophet. Come on. So, excuse me, that power, that tongues you're speaking, let it translate to result and outcome. Let, let it be seen in your results. We can't just come into speaking tongues in church and that's where he ends. No. See, God, see, Bible says, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We carry such a power that if we understood that God who created heaven and earth in seven days, how can he not make you great? How can he not make you powerful? How can he not make you so strong or so blessed in that business or that career? How can he not? Come on. We limit him because of our belief system. And you know, I'm going to give an example. So my, I started a business, a clothing line, actually. Yes. In 2019, November 2019. And, and I'm saying this also because of the importance of also getting the coach and the mentor. Um, you know, we all need a powerful support system. You know, I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful to God because God gave me an amazing husband who supports me. You know, and so I have a very strong support system, which I'm very thankful for. But you know, not everybody has that. Mm. Well, everybody needs a support system. So if you don't have someone in your house that's supporting you, get a coach, please. Yes. Or mentor. And sing your praise and 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 encourage you to take that next step. So I, I had a coach for my business. And you know what? And I was willing to, you know, like get all my, my ducks in a row and make sure everything is all, you know, cross my T's and dot my I's and everything's all well and good. And she's like, no, you are launching that business today. And I mean, I was paying money for this thing, you know. I had to listen to her. <laughs> no, the money will burn. 
<laughs> anyway, so so I did what she said. And I'm not even joking. Two months after, I took my fashion to New York Fashion Week. Come on. New York Two months Fashion Week. Two months. Look, if I didn't do what she said, I probably wouldn't have start, launched my business when I did. Mm -hmm. And I would have missed that opportunity. Yes. I'm saying that to tell someone here that, look, God is behind you. You have a power behind you that no man can find from. Mm -hmm. Our people are too small to even understand this power that we carry on the inside of us. Mm. Let that power show forth in your work. Let it show mm. forth your results. Let it show forth. Let it be that when you touch something, it just explodes. And people are like, uh -uh. when did this start? Why is, he, why is everything like this already? It's because you're working with God. <laughs> exactly. You know, if you, if you, obedience is the key. If mm. whatever God has committed into your hands, if you are faithful with it, God will open the doors for you. You mm. see, Bible says your, your gift makes rooms for you. Your mm. gift opens doors for you. And everybody is gifted in one thing. And you know what? When God created us, he said to each and every one of us, Jibs, he said, with whatever gifts I've given to you in the seven pillars of society, if you, you know, what, whatever gifts I've given to you, I want you to be fruitful with it. I want you to be fruitful in government. I want you to be fruitful in the media. I want you to be fruitful in the arts and entertainment industry. Wherever I have placed you, I want you to be fruitful there. I want you to also to multiply. Don't just be there. Do you know? No, you need to have influence. You need to multiply. You need to fill the earth. Let mm. the, not just your community, your voice needs to go places. People need mm. to, you know, people all over the world, Jibs, are probably, you know, they're watching you and they're saying, look at this woman with an accent, like you said. Look mm. at this young woman with a young family and, mm. you know, a, a newbie, someone that wasn't raised, you know, in government, mm. in politics. She didn't mm. even study politics and mm. she dared to rise up Mm. say she is going to run for city council mm. you know if she can do it what is preventing me from doing it exactly. the only limitation is in our own minds mm. and bible says be, you know be ye transformed by the renewal mm. of your mind you're only that you know no matter what god has called you to do bible says all things are possible mm. you can run for president for goodness sake Mm. You can you can ha you can have your own fashion line in New mm. York. <laughs> mm. Mm. All things are possible if That's you believe right. it, if you believe in God and if you believe in yourself. Mm. Yeah, you know, and you demonstrate that so much. The, you know that the fact that you you listened to yourself, you listened to because you rose up. God opened the doors for you. Mm. Mm. You took that step of faith. I want you to talk to people who are afraid to step out. You know, the Bible talks about the woman with the issue of blood. She had been sick for how many years? She couldn't go out. She couldn't get in, you know, come out because of her situation. But then she heard that Jesus was in town and she came out. What would you say to a woman that knows that she's got more in her, mm. but is just afraid to open that door and let people see the real her? Um, so first of all, I want, I want to say something quickly. Um, so before I answer your question, I just feel like I should say this. Mm. The biggest revelation of God is Father. You see, if we look at um, if we look at how Jesus, which was the who, who who was the closest to the Father, how did he always address God? Is Father? Yes. And we need to understand that our Father is not an irresponsible Father. Come on, girl. It's one who much more than I want to succeed. He wants me to succeed. So once you settle this in your mind, you know that if, look, if I were to sell water, if I, I would sell water to the fish and the fish will freaking buy the water. <laughs> yes, there's an anointing. <laughs> so, but address the fear. You know what? Fear is real. It's a fear is an emotion. And you know what? Fear is not always negative. Sometimes fear is there to just protect you, you know, from making the wrong decisions, you know. But you need to acknowledge that 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 emotion and re and figure out what exactly is it am I am I afraid of? Am I just afraid of, you know, of of you know some some people are actually afraid of success. Yes. It's true. Some people are just they're, they're afraid of, okay, look, if I do this, if I get too big, it might be an issue. So 
first of all, find out what are you afraid of? What is the thing that's making me afraid? Then later realize that, look, the Bible says that I am not giving you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Stand on the word of God. The word of God is so powerful. The Bible says it's sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is so potent, more powerful than prayer. You know what, what I heard my man of God said the other day? He said, look, when you look at the armor of the spirit, it doesn't talk about prayer. Prayer is not an armor. <laughs> right. It's important that we are grounded in the word of God because that is where the power is. Come on, girl. That is where the power is. You know, you know how the analogy he used said, look, if, if I had a gun and a bullet, if I had just a bullet and I threw it at you, it will, it will it really have no effect. But if I put that bullet in an AK-47, eh, and I did juju, people will run, right? So the gun is really the prayer. But that's it's important that we, we, we arm ourselves with the word of God. But to address the, your, your question, I feel like I've, I've, I've deviated and come back and deviated and come back. Yeah, you get there. You get there. It's okay. <laughs> Okay, so so again, like I said, you need to acknowledge, acknowledge that emotion. You know, what is it? Are you what is it that you're afraid of? You know, and realize that it's sometimes it's okay to be afraid. You it's know, okay. but you, but you need to also find someone that believes in you. Find someone that believes yeah. in you that can, you know, that can that can speak to your spirit. So look, um, see, God has given me a prophetic ministry, but even though I'm a, I have a prophetic ministry, I also have a prophet. So we, we all need someone who, who will speak life into our spirits, who will speak life into our lives, and who will encourage us. And it doesn't have to be a spiritual thing. It can be, it can be a colleague. It, I'm, I'm, I don't want to spiritualize everything here, you know, because I'm trying to be real at, at the same time. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm getting too much into the spiritual. But um, think, find someone who you know believes in you, who's able to advise you and push you, you know, to do that thing which you're afraid of. Yes. Because you know what? Because fear really, fear is, here is real. It happens to the best of us. Yes. And you know, I like what someone said once. She said, fake it until you make it. <laughs> so, so, so sometimes, like, I'm telling you, like, I mean, I might be here talking and you think that, oh, this lady is confident. But I'm actually sweating. My Like, you should see my, oh, under my, my outfit. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, sometimes you, you just do it because you know you have to do it. There's no other, there's no other choice. Yeah. There's no other choice, right? I, you know, I, 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 I totally agree with what you say. Um, I've been a pastor for over 20 years and, you know, um, those that know me, those are, those are, that are in my inner circle will tell you that I still panic and have fears about ministering. You know, there are certain platforms that, that I will be called to speak and I will be having panic attacks, anxieties. Not because I, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of, you know, it's only because I'm like, whoa, me here, you know, please God, let the words come forth. Fear mm. is real, you know, mm. fear is real. We know that, but I always tell people there are three types of confidence we need to have in life. And this, you know, when God gave me this revelation many years ago, it has grounded me and it has kept me in all that I do. The, you know, you know, and the first confidence we need to have jibs is God confidence. Mm. God has confidence in me. God has confidence in me. And he called this, you know, this girl out of, you know, what I was involved in. And he gave me a, a ministry to minister to women and to be a pastor. I mean, I'm sometimes I'm, I'm thinking, God, are you crazy? You know, mm -hmm. all the people you could have chosen, you chose me. Mm -hmm. You know, God has confidence in me. And then because of, because God has confidence in me, girl, I gotta, I have to, I have to have confidence in myself. Mm -hmm. I have to have confidence in myself that if he opens this door, girl, you got to show up. Mm. You, know, you have to rise up to it. That daddy mm. already opened the door because he knows you can do it. So therefore, you know, go do it. That's right. And I believe, and then, well, you know, God confidence will lead to self-confidence and mm -hmm. self-confidence will attract people's confidence in you. It will yeah. attract people's confidence in you because when people see you rising up, when they see this girl, you know, out of nowhere becoming a counselor, when they see her, that you know, it's gonna attract. I'm saying, oh my God, I want to know her. I want to be like her. I want her to work with me. It's gonna arrive. It's gonna draw people's confidence to you. 
And so mm -hmm. I want to encourage everybody, you know, understand that wherever you are is because God has confidence in you to do the job. So, you know, so let that confidence build self-confidence in you. And as you build confidence based on the word of God, based on who you are in Christ Jesus, the right people, people will come. Doors mm -hmm. will open. Doors will open. Doors will open, yeah? And Jibs, you said something about mentorship and coaching. For anyone to get anywhere in life, you need teachers. You need teachers. You know, uh, Esther could not have gotten to where she was without Mordecai. Yeah, Josh, um, Joshua couldn't have gotten to where he was without Moses. David could not have gotten to where he was. Even Ruth could not have gotten to where she got to without Naomi. You talked about the power of mentorship and coaching. If, if you want to get anywhere, if you want to rise up in politics, if you want to rise up in any of the seven pillars, women, you've got to make sure you surround yourself with mentors and coaches. People like Jib says will cheer you on, will encourage you. I have to ask one question. Jibs, how do you balance it all? <laughs> Mother of... <laughs> I can tell you. I can tell you. I've got. A, I have. I. I do a good job at balancing. But so, like I said, I, I think I have a very great support system, and mm -hmm. I'm really thankful for that. Uh, my husband is very supportive. Um, I have a nanny that helps with my kids, um, and the other things I do are part time. I do a lot of ad hoc things, um, just around. You know, um, I just started a new um, community organization. It's taken off very quickly as well. You know, um, just lots of things happening. But I, I want to address moms and women you know um and this these three things I, I i heard someone talk about um i believe it was yesterday or two days ago is three things self-care self-compassion and boundaries you know a lot of times as women we, we tend to neglect ourselves and just you know um not just let go you know and just you know focus on, on the kids on, on the husband and everything and your work and, and you just let yourself go the question how are you taking care of yourself how are you taking care of your mental health that is so important that is so important so for me what i do i go for a massage once a month i have a therapist you know you know people frown against oh why would you say a therapist i'm not i don't have any issues but guess what everyone needs a therapist and that's the truth whether we like it or not it might be your pastor it might be a paid professional but it's important that lots of us in our adulthood are dealing with childhood trauma that we don't even realize that that's the root cause of our problems Come on, but until you sit down with a professional you don't even realize that that is the issue as a person that's in the public space Sometimes you get a lot of negative things, you know, said to you just because you're in the public space, you know. Sometimes how do you deal with those things? And that's that's my way of dealing with it. So figure out what, one way to take care of yourself that you can that will help you rejuvenate. Because un, until you bring out your best, until you take care of yourself, you're not able to bring out your best self. And that's the truth. Number two, self compassion. Give yourself permission to make mistakes. Come and, on. And, and, I give, I give an example of myself. So yesterday, there was no school in, in my, my kid's school. Um, so my two so I have two boys and a girl. Um, my two sons, the youngest, the younger one doesn't go to school on Fridays, but the older one goes. And so I got him ready for school and we got outside. And for one minute, I'm like, why are there no other bosses or no other kids? And I realized that, oh, today is not school. I'm like, uh, oh my God. And I was, you know, I was gonna get into that, oh my God, why didn't I check? You know, people are gonna be saying, oh, look, this person is irresponsible. But I'm like, what? Hell no. You know what? I made a mistake. It's okay. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> so that's number two. Self-compassion. Give yourself permission to make mistake. And it's okay. You're human. The only person that's perfect is God. If you're not God, then it's okay to make mistakes. That's number two. Number three, boundaries. You need to know where to say no. You don't always, you don't, you don't have to always be Mrs. Nice. No. You don't have to always be Mrs. Nice. You don't have to play nice. Be nice. You can say no in a very nice way. But learn to set your boundaries for your own mental health. Mm, that is amazing. I'm, oh, my God. It's so wonderful. Time has really gone fast. And uh, we're going to come back to you and just give us one final word. Um, before we go, I just want to give some quick announcements. And then we'll, we'll get back to Councillor Jibs uh, be to you. Before, yeah, so we are continuing this, you know, this seven days of 
International Women's Day celebration, looking at women in the seven pillars of our society. And tomorrow we are finishing off this seven days with um, Pastor Beth Mason and Apostle Jennifer Foster. And they are gonna be talking about women in ministry and women in um, the church. Do you know that in some churches, they still have issues with women. Women are not allowed to preach. Women are not allowed to have any leadership position. So we're gonna look, we're gonna be talking about women in ministry on tomorrow, Sunday. And then on Monday to close everything out, we are going to be we are going to be having my birthday worship night with some of the most powerful voices in Calgary, Alberta, right where we are. Um, so come join us live on Monday with um, Everista, Didi, Olan Lessi, Ife, and Tolu. We're going to have a wonderful time just worshiping and giving glory unto God for us as women and for all that God is using women to accomplish in this, in our nations. And if you want to get in contact with us, we are on all of the social media platforms. If you are on YouTube right now, please click that subscribe button and subscribe to our channel. And I, I guarantee you, you will be blessed with all the content that is out there, especially if you've missed the last um, five days. You really need to go and watch all of those interviews. Um, we're also on Facebook. For those of you that are on Facebook, like us and um, connect with us there. We're on Instagram and we are also on Twitter. If you send us a message, our office will get in contact with you. Would love to hear from you. We would love to know what you, you know, what your thoughts are on all of the great topics we have been sharing over the last seven days. And right now I'm gonna ask Councillor Jibs Abitoye for one final word and, uh, and, how you, and then Priscilla is gonna come out and she's gonna sing us out. Councillor Jibs Abitoye, what would you say to all of the women, hundreds of women who are watching right now, what would be the one word that you would want them to remember you by? Well, let's say three. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm a politician. You can... <laughs> all right. Okay. So first of all, if you want to explode in a certain area in your life, say it's your business or career, or even if it's politics, two things, find someone that you see that is, it is progressing and, 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 and successful in that area and serve them. Find a way to serve them. Mm. Then on the reverse, find someone that you are better than and mentor them for free. And you will see how it will take off. I've done this and it worked for me many, many times. That's number one. Number two, I said, if you're not on the table, you are on the menu. So my final word to you is get on that table and be magic hmm. get on the table for all of you that are called into government and politics it is a ministry it is a ministry and god is looking for deborah to rise up there and represent him represent godly values represent god bring about change don't just be watching the news and be complaining about your government get involved serve get you know get involved join a party and let your voice be heard you have a voice use it you have a voice use it get involved get on the table with your voice thank you so much councillor jibs it has been an honor to have you and i'm looking forward to connecting with you more you are a woman you are a woman that is speaking my heart and i love your passion i love what you're doing and i just pray that god who has placed you there will keep you there god right. will take as you take care of his people and your and serve the community god will take care of your people he will take care yeah. of your family as yeah. you lay your hands to the plow all that you do will succeed and yeah. god and when and when we and when you stand before judgment day god will say jibs well done good and faithful servant i pray for grace for you i pray for strength I pray for wisdom, and I pray that the Lord God Almighty will encamp around you as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And I declare that no weapon fashioned against you will prosper. All that God has laid upon your heart to do for the community, 
He will surround you with resources. He will yeah. surround you with people. He will yeah. surround you with not just people, like-minded people, people yeah. that will carry the vision and run with it with yeah. you. God bless yeah. you. God bless your family. God yeah. bless everything that you do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We are going to be heading out tonight. Thank you all so much for joining us. Like I said, please make sure you join us tomorrow for day seven, women in ministry. And on Monday, a live worship to end, you know, to celebrate um, Women's International Day. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us. Over and over, again and again. Your